the person next to you and you say, you're going to say this, God is just getting started. Now you're going to look at the person on the other side and you're going to say, get ready for more. But now you're going to shake them a little and say, get ready for more. I want to share something really short, not, don't want to take that long, but it's something that's been guiding my life since, since I can remember. And if there's one word that has always taken me to understand what God has for me, is the word jump. Say with me, jump. Say it louder, jump. Now, what does it mean to jump? There's two types of jumps. One is the one you jump and you stay where? In the same place. But the other is the one you leap. The leap is when you jump and you go where? Forward. Say with me, forward. Say it again, forward. A lot of times we think we're moving forward and we're trying, we're doing everything. Lord, we're, we're jumping, but we're staying where? Same place. You know, life with God is always going where? 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 In Genesis, the Lord spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. What did God say to Abraham? Walk. Say with me, walk. Walking is a movement that you go where? Where do you go? Sometimes we wish we could be running the whole time. There are going to be times of running. There's going to be times of hearing God. But most of the time, life with God is a constant what? Walk. Say with me, walk. A walk that we're going where? Forward. And let me tell you something. Every time you're in God's presence, you're in God's word, God is taking you where? Forward. Sometimes you're not running. Sometimes you're not leaping. But you will always go forward. And something that I've understood in my life is that we can never stay still. If we stop giving fruit in our lives, if we stop giving fruit in our character, if we stop giving fruit in who we are, then something is wrong. Because even if you're in prayer, you're in silence, you're crying out to God, you're still moving forward. Because the time you are in God's presence is the time you're going where? to the destiny he has for you. And how many of you want to want to walk every day forward to the place and the destiny that he has for you? How many? To look at the person next to you and say, "Get ready to walk." And go forward. Shake him up and say, "You ready to go forward?" Shaking up a little more and say, "You ready to go forward?" I just want to read a verse that's in Isaiah 55, verse 8. And we're going to do something. We're going to read verse 8 and verse 9. Every time you see the word higher, you're going to say it out loud with me, okay? Verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are than the earth, so are my ways than your ways and my thoughts. It doesn't say higher, but let's just say it. Higher than your thoughts. Pay attention to this verse. I love it. It says, my thoughts are not Whose thoughts? Say my thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, 
declares the Lord. For as the heavens are what? Higher. Do you understand the meaning of this verse? The Lord speaks of two things. He speaks of his thoughts and he speaks of his ways. The only way you can understand God's ways, it's if you understand his thoughts. They're connected. And he says, son, daughter, your thoughts, the way you think, the human mind will never compare to the way I think. Neither are your ways are ever going to compare with my ways. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person that even when I'm quiet, I'm thinking. Are you guys the same? You could be quiet and people, oh, why are you so quiet? But you, you say, no, I'm not quiet. I'm going on here inside my mind. Does it happen to you? That you never stop what? And when a, a problem or something you can't understand, you may not speak it to others, but you're trying to figure it out where? You're trying to figure out how God is going to do it. You're trying to figure out how you're going to get your 12. You're trying to figure out how your finances are going to change. You're trying to figure out who you're going to marry. How many single people in the house? God have mercy on your souls. <laughs> and look, let me tell you something. The more you think, the further you are from God's thoughts. The more you try to process God's plans for your life, the less you're going to understand how he's going to do it. You know, God has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. But you, human, humankind, we try to figure things out on our own. We want to know how God's going to do it. We want to plan everything out. I'm a big planner. I like to plan my week. I like to plan my day. I know exactly what's going to happen during my day. Okay, at 8 a.m. I'm going to do this. At 10 a.m. I'm going to do this. At 1 p.m. I'm going to do this. At 5 p.m. I'm going to do this. And I like to plan everything. And it's not bad to plan. But the problem is when we try to plan what God is going to do in my life. Are you understanding? I'm going to need a volunteer. Anyone who can come up. One volunteer. Just one. Okay. What's your name? Dale. Dale? Dale. 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 Okay. I think I said it right. I don't know. Dale. Come here. Dale. How old are you, Dale? 22. 22. <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing, but I'm going to laugh with you. <laughs> now, Listen to, listen to this. A lot of times, we try to be like Dale. I'm going to represent God's ways. And Dale is, doing, is going on his own walk, on his path, on the way that he thinks God is going to do it. So he says, no, God is going to do it this way, and I'm going to study this, and it's going to be a blessing, and then I'm going to go there, and then I'm going to travel, and then I'm going to marry that person. And he has it all figured out. But the thing is, come here, Dale. Catch up. Come on, keep up. The thing is, when Dale says, okay, God, I want to understand that verse. Your thoughts are not my thoughts, but I think, Lord, I think you should do it this way. Your ways are not my ways, but Lord, I think this strategy is going to work. What is the problem when I try to implement my thoughts 
with God's thoughts and my ways with God's ways. You know, God says, okay, you want to know my thoughts? Give me your hand. And God takes the other hand this way. And God takes your hand. And God says, come this way. But Dale wants to go that way. Go that way, Dale. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Is Dale going to go to his purpose? Is Dale going to reach his destiny? God is saying, Dale, that's not the plan I have for you. That's not the person. That's not the job. That's not the career. But Dale says, but God, I think, I want, I feel. But God says, it's not my thoughts. You know, I love in the Bible, in Genesis chapter 5, it's so clear. Because the Bible speaks of one man. His name was Enoch. The Bible comes and starts saying everyone who lived, all the different names, dun, 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 and then all of a sudden, boom, Enoch. And the Bible says Enoch lived for 60 years. How many years? 60 years. And he had a son. His, son, his son's name was Methuselah. Methuselah, right? Yeah, okay. And I don't know what happened in Enoch's life. The moment his son was born, that changed his walk. So you're going to represent Enoch. He was walking. But the moment he had Methuselah, God changed something in his heart. You know, when I started studying this verse, I understood what Methuselah means. It means that moment of encounter, that moment of change. One moment. Enoch didn't need to have 10 sons to change. He only had how many? You don't need to go to 10 encounters to change. You need to make a decision. You're going to change your walk. You know, a lot of times I see people that go to conferences, go to encounters, want a, want a transformation, and God speaks to them. God changes them, but he's not going to change their walk. Methuselah, the Bible says that for 60 years he lived how? Walking how he thought. He could have gone to church, he could have done many things, but he did things his own way. When Methuselah was born, Enoch said, wait. I haven't been doing things God's ways, God's way. I haven't been doing things the way he wants me to do it. And the Bible says that's such a, a powerful verse because it says that from that day on, Enoch walked every day with God. Do you understand this? He walked not one day, not two not three, how many days? Every day. No longer there was a clash, but now Enoch was walking and letting who do the, the leading? God do the leading. Are you understanding? Now Enoch was just following. Enoch went from being the one leading to being the one what? Following. Because when you surrender your ways, you start following God's ways. Because when you surrender your thoughts, you start following whose thoughts? God's. But in order for Enoch to enter that walk, he had to leave his walk. Are you understanding? You could be religious and do things the way you want to do it. But the only way you're going to understand God's plan there's only a perfect purpose for your life. The Bible says that God's will is good, is pleasing, and is perfect. It's perfect. God, God's plan for you is perfect. But you're not going to find God's perfect will for your life if you don't let go of what you think is God's perfect will for your life. Are you understanding? Thank you, Dale. God bless you. Great actor. What do you got to do? You got to leave your walk to enter God's walk. You know, I love what the Bible says because Enoch, 60 years, 
He did what he thought, what he felt, and what he wanted to do. A lot of times, we want to serve God the way we think is right, the way we feel, and the way we want, right? A lot of times, we want to do things on our terms. And we think that prayer is just our way of getting God to do what we want. But let me tell you something. When you surrender, when you have that moment of change, for Enoch was Methuselah. I remember my father always tells that testimony when he encountered Jesus. He was 18 years old and his walk changed his life changed completely with one experience. You know, a lot of times we think we got to live from many experiences. But let me tell you, one touch of God is enough to change your walk, to change your life, to change everything you are. But the decision is yours. Say with me, it's mine. Say it louder, it's mine. Today you got you to gotta make a decision. Lord, I don't want to walk in my thoughts, in my ways. From today on, I want to walk with God every single day. Enoch was so amazing that the Bible says that the Lord saw Enoch. He was so pleased with Enoch that one day he was no more. God said, okay, you, you, you got to come. You got to come home with me. And God just took him home. Why? Because every day he surrendered his thoughts. Every day he surrendered his will. Every day he surrendered what he wanted. He wasn't 80% one day, 90% another day, 100% another day. Every day he was 100% surrendered to God. You know what God is looking for today? People that are surrendered. He isn't looking for talent people talented people, people who can preach, people who can talk good. He's looking for people that are surrendered to him. If you're surrendered to God, if you surrender your thoughts, if you surrender your will, let me tell you, my friend, God is going to use you, is going to transform you in a supernatural way. Being a Christian is not about how much I can do. It's about how much I'm willing to surrender. And the more you surrender, the more God gives you. It's an incredible, incredible way because you say, how am I going to give and get more? But that's the way that it is with God. You surrender and you, and you receive. The Bible says, Jesus told his disciples, whoever left father, mother, sons, daughters, houses. He says a bunch of things. For my name will receive a hundred times more in eternal life, but he also says where? On this earth. So listen to me. Surrender is for today. Say with me for today. Say it louder for today. Look at the person next to you and say it's for today. You know, when I understood this, our walk with God changes when we have that experience. What is your Methuselah? What was that experience that you say, that changed me, that encounter changed me? And perhaps you changed your walk for a time, but right now you're wavering. You know, my goal every day, I say, Lord, I want to be like Enoch. I want to be consistent. Walking speaks of being consistent. Say with me, consistent. Say it again, consistent. Say it again, consistent. If you run the whole time, you get tired. But you can walk forever and be okay. Life with God is what? Consistent. Say it with me, consistent. Say it louder, consistent. When you learn to walk with God, you don't focus on how God's going to do it. You don't focus on the why it happened, but you focused on, you're focused on what? On God's purpose. Say with me, God's purpose. When I was studying a little bit the life of Joseph, Joseph changed his walk. God revealed his dreams and God gave him dreams. 
dreams of what he was going to do through his life, dreams that no one understood. I don't even think he understood, but he changed. He changed something inside Joseph, changed, and he changed his walk. But during that time, he lived one of the most difficult times, and it was when his own brothers sold him as a slave. Now, it's interesting that the whole time that I was studying Joseph's life, I was looking for one word coming out of Joseph's mouth. Why? Why, Lord? Hasn't it happened to you that when you live something you can't understand, the first prayer or the main prayer that you do to God is why? Yeah or no? Has it happened to you? When you're not understanding something and you're, you're like, God, I'm serving you. I'm trying to walk with you. But I don't understand why this is happening. And your prayer is, why? You know, if there was someone in the Bible who had every reason to say why, was Joseph. But I find it incredible that he never asked that question. The Bible, at the end of his times, at the end of his life, when he already reunited with his brothers, when he revealed himself to his brothers, I love what he tells his brothers. The first thing he could have asked was, why did you sell me? What did I do to you? What, what did I do to deserve this? But it's so strong what Joseph says, and that's the answer of a person who walks with God. That's the answer of a person who is consistent with God. He says, brothers, don't be afraid. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel sad that you did this. Because God allowed this for a reason. He didn't ask, why did you do this? He said, thank you, because God used you. God used what you meant for evil. God used it for a reason. When you walk with God... Even the plans the enemy had for your life, God uses for a reason. Even what the enemy wanted for evil, God uses for a purpose. That happens to a person that walks with God. A person that walks with God, the Bible says that even his enemies become his friends. Why? Because God changes. God is fighting for you. God works for those who walk with him. God works for those who serve him. God works for those who are surrendered to him. Are you that type of person? Are you the type of person completely surrendered to him? You know how I know if someone's not walking with God? When that person complains the whole time. They come to cell group, but they come complaining. They come to church, but they're complaining. The whole time they're complaining, complaining, complaining. But when you're constant with God, how do you walk with God? You walk with God when you're every day in the light of the word of God. When you're every day on your knees surrendering everything that you are. There's no time for complaining there. There's no time for asking why, why, why. In prayer, God shows you for this, for this purpose, for this reason. And your focus changes and your life changes. How many of you say amen? amen. Give the Lord a big hand of, hand of praise. And I want to finish with this. In every situation, both in Enoch, in Joseph, I love that they gave their all. And when they surrendered their thoughts and their ways, they entered, as you were saying, the higher life. God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. For just as the heavens are what? Are higher. Have you ever tried to see how high the heavens are from the earth? When you go up on a plane and you're looking out, a wind, out the window of the plane, 
How do you see the cars? Do they look big or small? Can you even see people? It's very hard. If you have a superpower, you can see them, but normal people can't see them. It's hard to see. Why? Because you're seeing things from what? A higher perspective. When you surrendered your ways, the Lord says, my ways are not your ways. My ways are higher than your ways. Today, God wants to change your vision. Because many here have an earthly vision. Today, God wants to give you a heavenly vision. Many here see things in an earthly matter. When you're here and you see a big truck, and you're in front of the truck, is the truck bigger than you? Yeah. But when you go into that higher place, who's bigger now? When you receive that higher vision, you're going to see a bigger God and not a bigger problem. But to enter that higher vision, that higher way, you must surrender your thoughts and you must surrender your ways. You know, I feel there are many people here trying to figure out, you know, God spoke to you. God said, I'm going to do this with your life. I'm going to use you this way. But many of you are trying to figure out how God is going to do it. Let me tell you, that's not your problem. What you got to do is be in his presence every day and he's going to take care of the rest. What you got to what you got to do is hear God and obey. Hear and obey. Hear and obey. And your perspective changes. Your walk changes. Your vision changes. So don't try to figure out how God is going to do it. If you focus on the how, you stay looking at the past. If you focus on the for what, for what reason, your eyes are on the future. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So today if you feel that you've been trying to work out God's plans, you've been trying to figure out how God is going to do it, I want you to stand on your feet. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for God to change you. I'm going to pray for God to change your vision. And, and, and I'm going to pray for God to take you to that higher level, higher purpose. When I, when I was reading Genesis 5 and I encountered Enoch's life, it really changed me. Because I said, the Bible doesn't say much about Enoch, only about two verses. But there were only two men in the Bible that didn't taste death. One was Enoch and the other was, was Moses. Elijah, I'm sorry, yeah. And it's crazy to think, the Bible says a lot about Elijah. It doesn't say much about Enoch, but it says one thing. He walked with God. He walked with God. He gave up his walk and he walked with God. What's more important to God? What you do? The many things you do? Or that you're faithful in his presence? When you walk with God, you know, the more you're with someone, I don't know if it's happened to you. The more you're with a person, the more you start talking like that person. The more you start thinking like that person. The more you become like that person. I've met, it's funny because I've met couples, husband, a husband and a wife that they've been married for 30, 40 years and they end up looking like each other. Have you seen couples that look like each other? I promise, they start looking alike. 
when they got married, they didn't look alike. But after being together for 40 years, they look alike. You know, it's true. I don't know if it's going to be the same with my husband because he's way taller than me. I don't know how we're going to look alike in that. But God can do miracles, creative miracles. Amen. But listen to this. The more you're with a person, the more you become like that person. Walking with God is being with God. The more you walk with God, the more you're going to think like God. The more you walk with God, the more you're going to want His ways. The more you walk with God, the more you're going to be like God. And the Bible says that He created us to be in the likeness of His image. You were created to be like Him. And Jesus set the pattern for us. Jesus showed us the way. And Jesus never set his thoughts on human standards. Because he knew that God's ways are higher. It's interesting that God's higher plans with Jesus meant him becoming the lowest of all men. God doesn't think the way we think. But his plans will never, will never compare to our plans. Never. So today you're going to close your eyes. You're going to, first of all, you're going to put your hands on your head like this, on your mind. And you're going to say with me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my thoughts, my mind, Lord, I don't want to figure it out. I don't want to know how you're going to do it. I surrender my plans, my thoughts, my ways, and I pray, change me, that from today on, I can walk, I can think, and I can speak the way your word shows me to think and to speak. Lord, I believe what your word says, that your thoughts are not my thoughts, that your ways are not my ways, that just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are your thoughts higher than my thoughts. And now you're going to put your hand over your heart and say, Lord, I surrender my plans, my life, my walk. From today on, I don't want to walk the way I think, the way I feel, the way I want. Just like Enoch, I want to walk every day, every day. I want to be constant. I want to be faithful. I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you because I want to be like you. I want to understand your thoughts and your ways. And Lord, today, I don't want to focus on my past, on why it happened. But today, I want to fix my eyes on you, Jesus. And I want to understand the purpose for what I want to understand. Just like Joseph, he understood. And every day, he went forward. He went forward because he walked with you. And now you're just going to lift up your hands and I'm going to pray for you. Lord, I pray for every person in this place. I pray that your spirit may touch them. I pray that you may change their walk, that you may change their mind. 
just as your your word says that we must change the way we think by the renewing our minds must be renewed by the power of the spirit so that we might may understand your will your good your pleasant and your perfect will lord i pray reveal that perfect will to your children father i pray that they may understand that you have the control holy spirit and i pray change their walk change their minds change their hearts change the way they think and lord i pray place them in your perfect will that every day they may move forward in the purpose in the destiny in the dream that you have for them father that dream that you place in their lives that desire that you place in their hearts father i pray that they may believe and that they may trust that the god who gave them the dream will fulfill his promise and will take them there every day one step at a time and lord i pray that your children may learn to hear your voice and obey hear and obey father sometimes we wish we could see the whole the whole picture but i've understood that a walk with god is a walk of faith where we don't see the whole picture but we see the step we got to take you show us and you take us one step at a time and we become like you because we're walking with you and lord we want to take one step at a time show us the step we got to make show us the step we got to make show us the road we got to take show us lord speak to us lord father i pray show each person in this place the step they got to make they have that dream. They have that calling. They don't understand how. They don't know how you're going to make it. But Lord, show them the step. Show them the way. Show them that step of faith that they got to make. And lead them, Lord, every day. Lead them to your purpose. And lead them to your destiny. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. God bless.